All right, so I'm a PhD student in the Department of Pathobiology, and I'm going to be talking to you about my findings on mycoplasma in Ontario wild turkeys. This is just a small part of um, a broader project that I'm working on. I'm doing a health assessment that entails the numerous um, potential pathogens on wild turkeys in Ontario, but we thought these preliminary results might be of interest to you folks. So even though this is on wild turkeys, it's still important and applicable to the poultry sector because wild turkeys, domestic turkeys, and even chickens can be vul vulnerable to um, some of the same pathogens. So mycoplasma is a bacterial pathogen, and this is what can cause the disease mycoplasmosis. The infections aren't always apparent. However, sinusitis, air sacculitis, and reproductive problems can occur and there's often co-infections with other, other types of um, pathogenic bacteria that occur here. So for commercial poultry or domestic poultry, the main mycoplasmas that you tend to worry about would be Galliseptacum, Meliogritis, and Synoviae, and um, these have been known to cause great economic losses in the past for commercial poultry. For wild turkeys, until the mid-1990s or so, mycoplasmosis was never really considered a pathogen of interest because it was really hard to diagnose in the wild and it has long-term subtle effects so it's difficult to to um, detect. However, now we do know with a little bit of limited research that um, Galliseptacum, Meliogritis, Synovia and IOA can all cause problems in wild turkeys and there's now research beginning to suggest that Gallipavonis, which is really common um, and always used to be thought of as non-pathogenic, may actually be pathogenic. So I have preliminary results here. We do plan on mapping these out and doing spatial analysis and also comparing them to um, maps we have of commercial turkey operations and just seeing what, what there is to see, basically. For the study, I acquired 152 hunter-harvested wild turkeys from the spring 2015 um, wild turkey hunt. And of these, only two of the birds didn't have any mycoplasma in them whatsoever. 150 of them, so 98% had at least one species, if not more. They'd, a lot of them had multiple co-infections. And um, six different species of mycoplasma were isolated. So Gallipavonis being the most common, almost in every bird, followed by Gallinisium and Pylorum. And then the three that I mentioned that are known to cause trouble, Meliogritis, IOA, and Synovia, we had rare isolations of. And we also found that there was a large number of co-infections occurring. So in 23 of our birds, we had Gallipavonis and Gallinisium present. In 16, we had Gallipavonis and Pylorum um, together. And these co-infections, these are really important because it's known that they can produce synergistic effects. So even in, say, non-pathogenic um, mycoplasmas, you put them together, you can get patho pathogenic effects. If you take Meliogritis and Synovia, that can produce sinusitis in turkeys. If you take Meliogritis and IOA, that can make really um, much more pronounced air sac inflammation in the birds than either one of them alone would have. So just a brief discussion summary. Um, we did find a number of isolates of, of interest, Meliogritis, Synovia, and IOA. And then, of course, Galpavonis, which was in almost every single bird. Um, and now it's beginning to be thought that it's pathogenic to domestic um, turkey and chicken embryos, and that co-infections of non-pathogenic non um, mycos can affect wild turkeys as well. So this all basically leads up to some big questions as to where is all this mycoplasma coming from? Um, are these birds getting it from domestic? Is it getting it from commercial, game bird reserves, other wild birds? or are they maybe just running into contaminated equipment, water, food, that kind of thing. So um, much more research is re required to find out how this transmission is occurring and also to, de to determine the implications of these bacteria in wild per turkey populations and also their impact as a disease factor. So thank you.